All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, so first of all, I would like to acknowledge my team, uh, my um, uh, the project copy eyes, uh, Mary Hayden and Peter Howe, and also our collaborator, Cassie Olenek. Um, I work at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, which is managed by University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. And I also wanted to <clears throat> acknowledge National Science Foundation for funding this work. So this project is about responding to extreme heat um, in the time of COVID-19. Uh, we have many years of research that have shown that extreme heat is the leading cause of weather-related mortality worldwide. And there have been numerous, numerous studies that have assessed heat health risks, um, characterized population vulnerability, and also assessed the efficacy of different protective measures. In the beginning of the um, pandemic last spring, it became evident that many of the safety nets that have been put in place um, to cope with and respond to extreme heat may be disrupted. And uh, many people could be placed at risk uh, from extreme heat during summer months. So the goal of our work was to uh, better understand and quantify how the COVID-19 pandemic can affect the population, uh, heat risks, uh, perceptions, coping strategies, behaviors uh, during the summer months. And um, in this work, we um, designed a nationally representative survey of 3,000 American adults. Um, that was a georeferenced survey that um, we were conducted. Uh, we conducted in three waves. Um, the survey had questions about. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> questions about the COVID-19 and uh, heat, uh, extreme heat risk perceptions, experiences, uh, self-reported symptoms of heat stress, uh, household coping capacity, uh, self-advocacy, and protective behaviors. And our sample was recruited via IPSA's knowledge panel, and uh, for data analysis, we used uh, mixed effect regression models. So on this slide, <clears throat> I have only a few highlights from the survey. So we found that 82% of the US population were worried about the health effects of COVID-19. Uh, in comparison, uh, fewer people, but still more than half of the US population, 58% of the American adults were worried about the impacts of extreme heat. Um, we also saw that the millions of people reported negative heat effects. 19% uh, experienced uh, heat symptoms. 12% uh, reported reduced work productivity, and 15% reported feeling too hot in their homes. And despite the widespread use of air conditioning, we found that 13% uh, of Americans reported that the high cost of electricity prevented them from cooling their homes effectively. We also found that uh, some of the COVID-19 um, COVID pandemic uh, conditions decreased the coping capacity of the US population. We saw that millions of Americans lost their jobs or income um, or found it more difficult compared to a normal summer to seek medical care, leave home and go to an air conditioned place or to check on friends and neighbors. So in the series of um, uh, mixed effect uh, models, uh, we looked at, uh, first of all, the effect of geographic and socioeconomic predictors of negative heat effects. And here I have an example of heat symptoms. And some of those uh, predictors also included the access to air conditioning, including having air conditioning or having air conditioning but not being able to use it because of the multiple barriers. So for example, we saw that people with incomes of less than 30,000 per year were 26% more likely than average responded to report heat symptoms. And also people who reported barriers to using air conditioning, even though that they have air conditioning at home, were 125% more likely to report heat symptoms than people who had air conditioning and were able to use it. So then we also um, assessed the added effect of the pandemic. Uh, for example, people who said that it was more difficult for them this summer to change their daily routine to avoid extreme heat were 70% more likely to report heat symptoms than people who said it was less difficult or more different, difficult, different than this summer. So when we summarize a significant test for predictors uh, for three negative uh, heat health outcomes, which includes decreased productivity, feeling too hot at home, and having uh, heat symptoms, it is evident that access to cooling played a really key role across all the different outcomes. 
We also saw that the pandemic related factors, including social isolation because of the pandemic um, shutdowns or other restrictions were significant predictors. And as you see on this graph, the number of those factors increased uh, with the increase um, in severity of outcomes. And among all the socioeconomic groups, those who were more likely to report negative heat effects last summer were women, low income population with uh, income less than 30,000, Hispanic mixed rice Americans. And geographically, we saw that uh, in the South, in the West uh, regions of United States, we had more people uh, that were affected by negative effects of the heat. So one of the key findings from this study is uh, that the COVID-19 pandemic indeed did exacerbate existing systemic vulnerabilities to heat and also widen the range of vulnerable population. So in our next steps, we will be focusing a little bit more deeper on the analysis of spatial and temporal variations in people's experiences, risk perceptions, behaviors, and self-advocacy, as well as we will be taking a look at some of the broader environmental and societal factors that may affect risk perception and decision-making. And we also hope that uh, this work can contribute to a better understanding of the multi-hazard risks and intersecting vulnerabilities as we are looking at this work in a larger framing of risk and vulnerability, especially with the multi-hazard uh, situation. Um, so I will stop here and I will be able to take any questions either offline or um, in the chat. Thank you.